Right, so this week you guys got a bit of a challenge, but I'm just going to show you a couple of things just before we start. So first thing is this, which is really cool. Um, we've got a few people here, John, Bill, Peter, Craig and Mickey Mouse. Um, as you can see, Mickey Mouse is slightly older than the rest, but if we wanted to sort these by age order, um, you can see that John is 34. And if you just highlight the age and you go to sort and filter, you can choose smallest to largest or largest to smallest. So if we put them in age order, if we go smallest to largest, click here, it comes up with this thing called expand the selection or continue with the current selection. Now we're going to expand the selection. Watch what happens. Watch how these names change with the ages. So if I go to sort, uh, it keeps it all together. Mickey Mouse is still 115. Craig is still 38. It's actually swapped the names around with the ages. So Excel's quite good at that. Now this is important because if you go to say try it again with those ages and you go to sort and fill it smallest to largest and I actually go with continue with the current selection watch what happens to how these ages map to the names. If I go to sort it swaps all the ages around but not the people so Mickey Mouse is still um, about the right age but actually then Peter goes to 34 which previously John was 34. So it's really important that when you do that sort and filter, that you do expand the selection so it keeps all the data associated with this column. And sometimes it might have the name, it might have their date of birth, it might have loads of different columns. And as long as you expand the selection, it will filter the age and keep everything else linked to it. So that's really useful. The other thing is um, with these sort of uh, formulas, if we had here, say, Peter, and Peter's wage was, say, 12 RMB an hour, for example. Firstly, I'm going to just put that to RMB. And let's say he does seven hours a day. So that would mean that if I did equals that multiplied by that, it would say that in a day he earns 84 REM. So for me, I'd say that's probably a little bit low. So I'm going to increase his wages a little bit. I'm going to change them from 12. 24. Give him a double pay rise, he'll be well happy. So now he's on 168 rem a day. Now with a week it would make sense to say equals that multiplied by 7, which is great. He earns 1176 rem a week. However, we might not want him to work 7 days. So actually we're going to say in a week you'd have 2 days off. So actually in one week he only works 5 days. So now he's on 840. Okay. So it's not always seven days because he doesn't work every day. Then for the month, what you would do is you would then say, okay, if he worked five days for every week, how many are how many weeks are there in a month? Well, it's actually not four, it's 4.33 recurring. So for this, I'd go equals that multiplied by 4.333. I could put as many threes in the one, but I'm just going to put four there. And it shows as his monthly wage. And then from here, I can go equals this multiplied by 12 and that is his uh, yearly cost now let's say um, he said look I really really need some help um, is there any chance I could do an extra two hours a day because um, I need my salary to be over 50,000 so I could do so okay fair enough I will go to nine hours a day and it takes him to 56 which is great so this is a really good way of doing it now personally you, it's good to have this in because you can see how much they work a day, a week, a month, and a year. But sometimes you might only want to put the wage in and have that hours. So this is option two. So I'll call this Peter version two. What you could do is put his wages in and his hours in and get the yearly wage. Now, there are easier ways of doing it than this. Um, it's probably beyond the scope of the video. Um, so I'm just going to show you how, how you could potentially do it. You could go equals this multiplied by this okay then what I'm going to do is put it in brackets then I'm going to look at the day so he works five days oops that puts that in brackets okay so that's then on the day then the week uh, sorry the month run is going to be multiplied by 4.3333, put that in brackets, and then I'm going to multiply it by 12. So that is one pretty crazy formula. If I just tick that, 
I get exactly the same. And if I just try changing those back to say 12 and 12, I get exactly the same except this one has done it individually, whereas this one condenses all the formula. And this way Excel really comes in quite handy because it allows you to just write one very, very complex formula. And we could even have Bob here. What I could do is get this, drag it down, and then as soon as I put Bob's wages in, 18 and five hours, then tells me his yearly salary. And for this, I would just need to convert them into Remby. Okay, so that's actually a really, really useful thing. Okay, so the next video is gonna be the big challenge, prepare yourself.